Everyone was afraid to be around him. Well, he would act up so much that he never got to go out to the playground. And the children who didn't go to playground, that hour, they all sat in the art teacher's room. Wouldn't you love to be that art teacher? <laughs> well, that was Liz. Well, she said what happened over the first few weeks is Tommy was such a terror that all the other children who were misbehaving stopped misbehaving because they didn't want to be in the room with him. So in a matter of weeks, it was just Tommy and Liz during time out for an hour. But Liz was a special kind of lady. She always had some soft meditative music playing and she never really tried to intrude on anybody else's life. But she had this little song that she would sing. Will you give me a C? And this little song said, I am, you are, we are expressions of, I am, you are, we are expressions of, I am, you are, we are expressions of love. She would kind of sing that a lot in the background. And you can imagine Tommy just, you know, you can't wear headsets in a classroom, so he's huffing and puffing. And he's just drawing. And she said he would draw these little cartoons. And, but as the weeks went on, just she and Tommy, she would sing that song, really creating a space of love. And little by little, he would ask, and as the weeks went on, he began to relax and to open up, but he continued to work in his book, Drawing. But she said it was toward the end of the year. He finally one day said, I'm ready to show you what I've been drawing. And she said that was the highest compliment one could have paid to her. She sat down beside Tommy, and he started to show her these cartoons that he had drawn out that told his life story, what no one in the school system knew. Well, Tommy's mother was in a rehab program and apparently had been over and over and over, so she was pretty much not available. Tommy's father was holding down two jobs and he was hardly ever home, so most of the time Tommy had to take care of his little sister and they both stayed with the grandparents. Grandmother was terminally ill, in bad bed, grandfather was very angry and an alcoholic. And through all this cartoon drawing, she said it, it, it just opened her up. She was so moved with love. And just like that, instead of seeing this smelly, mean, angry guy, all of a sudden she saw this hurting, innocent child. Love changes us. Well, she went back and she obviously shared that information confidentially with the principal and with the other teachers. And what happened is all of them had a shift inside because once you know something like that about a person, how in the world can you hold it against them anymore? No matter how mean, no matter how they act up, you realize that they're just parts of them are asleep. They're, nobody has held them in the light of love yet and they don't know how to internalize it. So because of this information, all of the teachers just begin to respond to him differently without acknowledging they knew his story, without saying anything, but the energy, the presence of love begin to come through. Liz said that in one year, by the time he went to junior high and made it into the sixth grade, he had completely changed. His grades were higher. He was one of the favorite students in all the teachers' classes. That's what the power of love will do. And that's a true story. That each of us, every day, in every way, in unspoken ways, are touching people with, with our life and things that we say and things that we don't say. In my opinion, one of the most powerful movements on the planet is AA, a 12-step program, because it deals with, most of the time, if an individual is ready to make that commitment, they have hit the bottom, they don't know how to make their life work. And there is a type of surrendering to love. A quote says, reminding ourselves that we have decided to go to any length to have a spiritual experience, we ask that we be given strength and direction to do the right thing. No matter what the personal consequences may be, when we are ready, we say something like this. My creator, I am now willing that you should have all of me, good and bad. I pray that you now remove from me every single defect of character that stands in my way of usefulness to you and my fellows. Grant me strength to go out from here to do your bidding. Now I want you to listen to it like this. Reminding ourselves that we have decided to go to any length 
And as a matter of fact, reminding ourselves that we were born to bring forth the love that we are. What if we would say something like this? Love, I am now willing that you should have me, all that I am, good and bad. I pray that you, love, now remove from me every single defect of character that stands in my way of usefulness to myself, to my fellow man, to the God of my being. Grant me that I go from here, that I know love, and that I be love. Can you imagine what would happen if we all began to really adopt and pray that prayer? How do we bring forth the love that we are? Louise Hay says, Love is the great miracle cure. Loving ourselves works miracles in our lives. The catalyst that we are looking forth to bring forth the love, the peace, the abundance, whatever it is we need in our life, the catalyst to bringing it forth is right within us, is accessed from within our own being. I think there are four points that would help all of us to remember four things we can do every day as we do recommit and make the commitment to bring forth the love that we are, which is bringing forth the God that we are. Number one, begin to notice love. It's easy to notice. I told you earlier, I thought of some things. I love chocolate. I love pizza. I love purple chairs. I love sunshine. I love Sony's music. Think about and begin to notice. Set your day. What you pay attention to expands. Notice love. Number two, celebrate and appreciate love. Take it a step further. Don't just notice it. Now celebrate it and appreciate it. What we appreciate grows. That's a law of life. What we appreciate grows. Rumi said, let yourself be silently drawn by the stronger pull of that which you really love. I've worked with individuals before who were looking for loving relationships. And I've shared these four steps with them. Notice love, now celebrate and appreciate love. And I was working with one lady and she came in and we talked about that. She said, you know, I am just about as tired as I can be of celebrating other people's love. <laughs> I'm ready for a dose of my own. But we began to work with that, that if I look at you and in your life and I can see love and I can celebrate love, you may have those feelings of jealousy or envy or frustration. Whatever you're, if you need abundance, then find people who are abundant and look at them and appreciate them in a new light. And when you feel those feelings of jealousy or frustration come up, just pay attention and say, oh, that's because a part of me is still in the dark. That's believe a, because a part of me believes that I can't have it too. But if I can see it and recognize it and I can celebrate it, I am tuning in to that channel. It's just like this beautiful Mount Rainier. That mountain is always there. When that mountain is out, isn't she glorious? Yeah. Or he glorious, however you refer to it. I love this mountain. And when the mountain is out, I just look and it's as if it speaks to me and I feel the energy and I soak it up. And then to those days when it's cloudy and I can't see it, I can still turn and soak it up. It's still there. I can still attune myself to it. That is love. That is God. And when it's not there, when we can't see it, those are the most important times for us to still attune to it. I notice it. I celebrate it. And now I begin to express it. What we, tend, what we put forth tends to be what we receive. Everyone can add love into their actions, into their attitude, into their thoughts. We notice it. We celebrate it. We express it. And finally, we receive it. Blessed are those who give without remembering. And blessed are those who receive without forgetting. Cerny, if you'll give me that song again. When we receive love, I want to show, read to you just very quietly for now. A group of adults gathered four to eight-year-old children and they asked them, how do you notice love? Rebecca, age eight, said, when my grandmother got arthritis, she couldn't bend over and paint her toenails anymore. So my grandfather does it for her all the time now and he's even got arthritis too. That's love. Billy, age five, when someone loves you, the way they say your name is different. You just know that your name is safe in their mouth. 